Hello friends. Uh, again, we are going for the same discussion in the hydrodynamic bearing. And in hydrodynamic bearing, we are going for the design of hydrodynamic bearing. The design of hydrodynamic bearing is done by the Raimondi and Boyle chart. In previous lecture, we learned the Petroff's equation, and then we went for the Reynolds equation. And in the Reynolds equation, we understand that. there is no general fluid form solution to the renold equation however approximate solutions have been obtained by using electrical analogy or numerical methods the albert ramondi and john boyle of westinghouse research laboratory have solved the renold equation on computer by using iteration method Uh, in that method, uh, after solving that by the iteration method, they got the solution in the form of unitless parameter and the charts. That unitless parameters have uh, various uh, variables. First is the design variable, and second one is the performance variable. The design variables are the control of are under the control of designer and designer can decide the values of the design variables so what are the design variables design variables are the journal speed viscosity of lubricant unit bearing pressure or load per projected area bearing dimensions such as the radius clearance length and the bearing arc we can say but uh, ns the journal speed is depend on the application where the hydrodynamic bearing is used so uh, we can say partially the journal speed is under the control of designer then after this there is a performance variable the performance variable are those which tells how the bearing hydrodynamic bearing is performing well so what are the uh, performance variable the coefficient of friction then temperature rise flow rate of lubricant minimum oil film thickness the combination of design variables and the performance variable are present in ramondi and boyle chart right now we will discuss the ramondi and boyle chart force one in the ramondi and boyle chart there are various columns and rows so these are the columns are present and the corresponding rows are present so first column is l by d ratio please keep in your mind l by d ratio length upon diameter so length of bearing and the diameter of journal so this is the one this table presented for l by d ratio as y then next one is epsilon eccentricity ratio next one ho upon c then sommerfeld number and so on the table having the various combinations the values of this dimensionless parameter are available in the form of charts and tables the charts and tables are available for the full as well as partial hydrodynamic bearing of l by d ratio this l by d ratio as 1 upon 4 1 upon 2 then 1 and infinity so uh, we are we will discuss this ramondi and boyle chart in detail and then we will start the momentum but keep in your mind in uh, according to spbu syllabus there will be a numerical on the hydraulic uh, hydrodynamic bearing of minimum 10 marks and maximum 16 marks numerical will be there and that numerical is completely based on the ramondi and boyle chart and again important thing you must know the linear interpolation for the solving this numerical so how to interpolate the data we will discuss that thing in the numerical session today we are having only the theory of ramondi and boyle chart so first thing l by d ratio epsilon 
and various uh, parameters we are having and this kind of table is available with us in a question paper and numerical will be based on this table only now we will discuss this table in detail so first parameter is a uh, dimensionless uh, number is l by d length to diameter so length of bearing and diameter of shaft so there are many options are with us many means only four options are with us so is uh, uh, infinity one one half and one fourth so numerical are generally uh, depend uh, you can say it is of one L by D ratio of one and one L by D ratio of one half is there. So length of uh, bearing and the diameter of journal or shaft. Next one is epsilon. Epsilon is eccentricity ratio. So what is eccentricity ratio? It is the it is the ratio of eccentricity to the clearance so how to find this ratio for that one we go through this bearing and here we know that the capital r capital r is the radius of the bearing so capital r is having the three elements first element is o o dash which is indicated as a small e so r is equal to a e so first one is a e e plus this is the radius radius of journal so r is equal to e plus small r and the minimum oil film thickness present in a journal and bedding so ho capital r is equal to e plus r plus h o so by taking this r on this side we will have r minus small r is equal to e upon h o we know that the r upon r minus r is clearance so small c is equal to e plus h o and now we need a eccentricity ratio so divide this equation by small c so e upon c is e upon c is equal to 1 minus ho upon c so this is the eccentricity ratio and this e upon c is equal to 1 minus ho upon c again keep in your mind as the eccentricity increases the maximum pressure is increases as well as negative pressure is also increases the value of eccentricity increases the steps curve is also increases after eccentricity after this eccentricity we are having h upon c H upon C is the minimum oil film thickness. Minimum oil film thickness to the clearance ratio. So H upon C is very important. Again, the minimum oil film thickness is also dynamic operating clearance of the hydrodynamic body. Knowledge of oil film thickness or dynamic clearance is also useful. in the determining filtration and metal surface finish requirement typically minimum oil film thickness in the load zone during the operation range is from 1 to 300 microns but the value of 5 to 75 microns are more common in the mid size industrial equipment the film thickness will be greater in equipment which have a larger diameter shaft keep in your mind again i am repeating the minimum oil film thickness in the load zone during the operation ranges from 1 micron to 300 microns but the value 
of 5 to 75 microns are more commonly used in a mid-size industrial equipment. Now, uh, next one is capital S. Capital S. Capital S is a Sommer field number. In the design of fluid bearing or hydrodynamic bearing, the Sommer field number is a dimensionless quality quantity which use extensively for hydrodynamic analysis. The Sommer field number is very important in the lubrication analysis because it contains the variable normally specified by the designer. So it is under the control of designer. So it is very important. And Arnold Sommerfeld invented this number, the Sommerfeld number. So Sommerfeld number capital S yes, is equal to R upon C bracket square into mu ns upon small p. And this small p is equal to the bearing pressure load upon projected area. So load upon projected area, so load is W we consider, L is the length into diameter of the shaft. So this is the small p and this is capital S. Sommerfeld number decides the quantity, uh, sorry, quality of lubricant. Quality of lubricant means viscosity of lubricant. So this is again very important parameter. Next one is a phi. This phi is a position of maximum pressure. This phi is a position of maximum pressure. It gives an angular position of maximum pressure in the fluid film. It gives angular position of maximum pressure in the fluid film. Next one is the coefficient of friction variable R upon C into F. R upon C into F where R is the radius of shaft or journal C is the clearance between the bearing and the journal and F is the coefficient of friction. The coefficient friction variable, the coefficient of friction variable is very important, is very important because it gives direct effect on the efficiency of bearing, efficiency of bearing. We already seen the regimes of hydrodynamic bearing and in which the thick film lubrication or the hydrodynamic lubrication, the coefficient of friction may be low as 0.001. Next dimensionless number is Q upon RCNSL where this Q is a flow rate of lubricant flowing inside the corresponding hydrodynamic bearing RCNSL. These are the design parameter and this is the performance variable. Again this flow variable or indirectly flow rate is very important because this flow rate is useful for the dissipation of heat which is generated inside the hydrodynamic bearing due to power loss in due to the friction and this Q is very essential for dissipating the heat carry out the heat from the hydrodynamic bearing. Next one is a flow ratio Q upon QS. Q is the flow rate and QS is a side leakage present in a hydrodynamic bearing. Maximum pressure, uh, maximum film pressure ratio. This is again an important parameter which indicates the maximum pressure or which gives the maximum pressure P max for the corresponding hydrodynamic bearing. 
so whenever the numerical comes uh, in a question paper at that time one case is like that define the con or find out the quantity and the quality of lubricant used in a hydrodynamic bedding at that time the quantity means fluoride and the quality means mu mu viscosity of lubricant and viscosity of lubricant can find out by sommerfeld number and the quality and the quantity you can say the quantity can be find out by the flow variable and this flow variable or q the corresponding flow rate is very important to dissipate the heat in hydrodynamic lubrication or in hydrodynamic bearing in the feed lubrication cool and clean is done by the lubricating oil the cooling and cleaning of the bearing is done by the lubricating lubricating oil lubricant in hydrodynamic bearing the power lost in the friction is converted into heat the power lost in the friction is converted into heat which increases the temperature of lubricating oil and this heat is dissipated by the conduction convection and radiation carried away by the flowing lubricating oil in hydrodynamic bearing so what may be the heat generated due to the power loss uh, friction power loss in the friction and that heat generated is dissipated uh, carry away out by the lubricating oil mm -hmm. again as it is difficult to calculate the rate of heat dissipation by conduction convection and radiation it is assumed that the total heat generated in the bearing is carried away by the lubricating oil as far as the temperature rise of the lubricating oil is concerned it this assumption is considered so the temperature rise in hydrodynamic bearing so power loss due to friction is the heat generation and we are considering what may be the heat generated is equal to the heat dissipated by the lubricating oil so hg is a heat generation due to friction so frictional torque into angular velocity so frictional torque fwr into 2 pi ns and to maintain this in kilowatt it is fwr upon 10 raised to 6 into 2 pi ns so heat generated is we calculated now we will see how much heat dissipated by the corresponding hydrodynamic bearing so heat carried away by the circumferential flow plus heat carried by the axial flow in a hydrodynamic bearing is the total heat dissipated by the lubricant so heat carried away by circumferential flow and another parameter is heat carried away by axial flow circumferential uh, circumferential flow due to relative motion qc we are considering the major portion of lubricating oil flows in the circumferential direction and is present in the bearing for maximum possible duration we know that in hydrodynamic bearing the wedge film is formed and it is along the circumference along the circumferential flow so the major portion of lubricating oil flows in the circumferential direction and it is present for maximum possible duration this portion of lubricating oil absorbs the heat during which the temperature increases from t1 to t2 during the 
temperature increases from T1 to T2. So, and this T2 minus T1 is considered as a delta T temperature rise of circumferential flow. While some portion of lubricating oil is continuously leaking through the ends of syringe, so side leakage is takes place and this side leakage or axial flow leads again the small portion of uh, or some portion of heat dissipation. So this flow, axial flow or side leakage is continuous right from the entrance of lubricating oil into the bearing till the exit. Therefore, this portion of lubricating oil is not present in the bearing for the maximum possible duration. So it is assumed that the side leakage takes place by considering the average temperature by considering average temperature means delta T by 2. So the heat dissipated heat dissipated is equal to heat carried away by circumferential flow as well as heat carried away by the axial flow. So heat dissipated is equal to MCP delta T uh, in the uh, circumferential flow the mass flow uh, in a circumferential manner and MSCP delta T where MC is the mass present in a circumferential flow and MS is the side leakage mass. Then by further considering rho, rho as the mass density, density of lubricating oil in kilogram per meter cube then we will have then we will have the heat dissipated is equal to rho qc qc is the circumferential flow rate of lubricating oil in mm cube per second we consider into cp delta t and rho qs qs is the side leakage rate of lubricating oil in mm cube per second cp delta t here the side leakage so average temperature average temperature rise is considered but the qc is the circumferential flow is equal to total flow rate minus side leakage so hd the heat dissipated is equal to rho bracket q minus qs bracket complete cp delta t divided by 10 raise to 9 plus rho qs cp delta t by 2 10 raise to 9 by rearranging the terms by taking common rho q cp delta t into 1 minus 1 half qs upon q divided by 10 raise to 9 that is the heat dissipated due to heat dissipated by the lubricating oil in hydrodynamic bearing. So by equating heat generated is equal to heat dissipated. So FWR into 2 pi ms upon 10 raise to 6 is equal to rho q cp delta t into bracket 1 minus 1 half qs upon q divided by 10 raise to 9. So delta t furtherly we can calculate delta t is equal to fwr 2 pi ns upon rho q cp d into 1 minus 1 half qs upon q into 10 raise to 3 degree celsius where ns is in rps w is in newton rho is in kg per meter cube r is in mm q is in mm cube per second cp is in kilojoule 
per kg per degree Celsius. Delta T is in per degree Celsius. In some cases, we can neglect the side leakage. So at that time, we have to consider Qs is equal to 0. So this is all about the uh, Ramondi and Boyle chart according to the syllabus. Uh, now I'm, I'm saying that the Ramondi and Boyle chart theory is uh, almost finished. From next lecture, we will start the numerical. Thank you everyone. If you are having any query, you can contact me on my WhatsApp number. Thank you.